Hey everyone, today we are at the NACA facility near Athens, Georgia and we're going to learn about brick and masonry staining and why we should not paint brick. NACA is an international company that has developed a range of stains and colour solutions for brick, concrete, stone and other masonry surfaces. Unlike paint, their stains and colours don't chip, peel or fade. To learn more about the differences between painting and staining masonry, I spoke to Emmett Croak, Vice President of Operations at NACA. Well, typically when you paint masonry, it's not going to breathe and it's going to be a film coating, which is a mechanical bond. So over time, it's going to peel and flake off. And over time, it could cause structural damage to the masonry or concrete. Unlike a stain that NACA manufactures where it's penetrating and breathable and it, it forms a chemical bond, it's a permanent substrate and it'll, it'll get harder over time. So you won't have any of the concerns of the flaking or the peeling. So there's a troubling trend right now, both in the residential and commercial industry, to paint bricks. Any red bricks, paint them white. And yes. Do you see a lot of problems occurring in the next 20 years or so with delamination? Yes, because it's going to be a film coating, it's not going to last. The stains that have the UV protectant, the additive, light fast, they're going to be much more durable. So you're going to have a permanent bond. Whereas with the paint, it's just going to continue to be more of a maintenance issue. So you paint it, it looks great for a year or two, and then over time it's just going to spall and cause delamination. Well, if you can see over here, this paint is a solid finish and it's film coating only, so it's not absorbing into the substrate. Where the stain, you can see, is a little bit more natural appearance, and so it's breathable. With the paint, what's going to happen is it's going to trap moisture in your, in your building cavity, uh, so you'll have less breathability, which will lead to delamination, structural issues, but efflorescence, because masonry or concrete needs to breathe. So with our stains... So what is efflorescence? Efflorescence is a byproduct of the salts that are in the concrete design mix. And so when the water mixes with the cement, it causes it to bloom out of the surface through the coating that's on the brick. And when, when you talk about structural concerns, when you, you paint bricks, what could happen to the substrate behind it? Well, eventually moisture is going to force its way out. So as the efflorescence appears, it's going to eventually push that coating off the brick or the concrete. And then more so, it's going to take the face of the brick or the mortar joints or even the cement, which is in the concrete finish itself. With the stain, it's not going to trap any moisture. It's going to allow the, the, the building to breathe properly. So any masonry wall or concrete will get moisture in. So the design needs to allow it to, to penetrate and escape as well. So what's the curing time for paint versus stain? Well, a paint will usually cure out in 48 hours. And then uh, it's done. And then it's done. Whereas our stain will dry to the touch in 48 hours, but the curing time is 28 days. NACA set up a testing station to demonstrate the superior resilience of stains compared to paints. This concrete piece has paint on the left and stain on the right. When sprayed with a pressure washer, the paint came off relatively easily since it is only bonded to the surface. You can see the exposed concrete underneath. The stain on the right was barely affected because it is chemically bonded. In addition to durability, stains are also more versatile than paints. These panels were manufactured by pouring concrete into reusable polyurethane forms. With several layers of stain, you can turn dull grey concrete into a wall that looks like brick. This technique can transform the colossal but monotonous tilt wall concrete buildings in commercial areas. You can also mimic different types of wood and stone forms and even abstract patterns. Let's take a look at some of NACA's projects. They turned this multi-story red brick building in New York to a grey-white finish while preserving the clock on top of the building. They also transformed an old ranch-style home in Canada by staining its red brick facades black. This newer house in Canada had a more dramatic transformation. They created a textured stone finish on the front and side of the building to match the grey metal panelling. Mike Honeyman, an operations manager, gave us a quick demonstration on how stains are applied to concrete. So we'll start off here on the smaller sections. We'll lay this down like this, and that looks pretty good just the way it sits. We'll let this dry, and then we'll add 
a couple more just to give more highlight colors, just like this right here. So that brings the highlights and brings the texture of the stone out. And if we wanted to, we could let that dry and come back and put a antique wash on it to make it look old or to give it some more range. Typically on the bigger size building, you want to might have a little bit more range and not as much uniformity. So it's easily achieved by our field technicians and their abilities to change and adapt on a job. I make this look very easy, but I've got 26 years experience. So this is it, 26 years and counting. He wasn't kidding about it being difficult. I tried to mix black, red, white, and yellow stains to mimic this color, but failed twice. During my first attempt, I added too much black, so the stain mixture was too dark and too brown. The second time, I added too much red, so the mixture was too orange. There's an art to matching and applying stains. These products must be applied by trained professionals, not DIYers. So this is another example of how you change concrete that looks like brick into more realistic looking right. brick. So what the application would be on this would be a base color that goes on everything and that becomes part of the substrate and the mortar joints. And as you can see, some of that's transcending through and then we'll put the darker colors on top and then we'll come in and add the speckling or the fleck to give it that natural look, which is the grog in a traditional masonry clay masonry unit. So those are three or four different This would be layers. a four color application, yes. And are the, all those done on the same day? Depending on the size of the project, they might come in and put the base color on, you know, X amount of square footage per day, and then they'll come back the next day and do the brick highlights, and then maybe they'll come back and do the speckling. All depends on the conditions of the job site and the size of it. Stains are also cost competitive to paints. While typical masonry paints can cost around $2 per square foot, Basic stains cost $3 to $4 per square foot. It's much cheaper than integral colored masonry that can cost over $10 per square foot. Metallic and iridescent stains can cost $7 per square foot. These can be used on selective ornamental feature walls. So a big thank you to NACA for showing us all their different stains and possible applications of their product. If you have any questions about it, leave me a comment below. I'll link their website in the description. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. See ya.